How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Johnny here again. Taking a look at 19.2, Entropy and the Second Law. So, objectives. We want to be able to explain what entropy is, its role in reaction spontaneity, and to quantify the value of entropy for phase changes, which is going to be uh, done by using this equation. All right, we'll get into that. All right, so nature favors low energy. We've seen this before. So reactions that release energy or heat, exothermic reactions, are favored because our systems are ending up with less energy because they're giving it off. But there are spontaneous reactions that are endothermic, that spontaneously absorb heat. For example, if you've ever seen those ice packs found in first aid kits where like you crack them or you like hit them and then they get cold, well, there's a spontaneous reaction that's occurring that's absorbing heat. Uh, so how is that possible? How, there must be something else going on if you know it's absorbing heat. That's not supposed to do that spontaneously, right? Well, it isn't all about energy. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here we have two flasks connected with a valve in between them. One is empty, so this one's empty, and this one's got a gas in it, right? And there's a valve right here. Well, what's going to happen when we open the valve, when we remove the thing that's stopping the gas from spreading out? Well, the gas will spontaneously expand into the other flask. Uh, this process has no change in energy. This doesn't require energy. This doesn't give off energy. It's energy neutral. It's not doing anything. So there must be another factor other than energy that's playing a role in if a reaction is spontaneous or not, if a process is spontaneous or not. Enter entropy. So the reason the gas particles spread out is because they're moving randomly. So nature favors systems moving towards increased randomness, going from organized to less organized, from uh, not chaotic to chaotic. So having all the particles in one flask is relatively ordered. So spreading out into another flask will make it more random. All right, so you can think of entropy as a measure of randomness or disorder in a system. Nature favors increasing randomness in the universe. All right, so tip for students. Try this at home, okay? Tired of being told to clean your room? I'm sure you are. Try this next time. I'm sorry, parental units, but the universe favors randomness, and I'm but a single teenager. How can you expect a teenager to take on the forces of the universe? Uh... It probably won't work, but at least they know you're learning something in school, you know? All right, so when does entropy increase? Well, it increases with phase changes. So if we go from a, a gas to a liquid to a solid, that's not increasing. That, that should flip those around, right? Going from a solid to a liquid to a gas is where you have more entropy. Right? So if we take a look at the solid particle diagram over here everything's nice and organized we got a regular shape and everything's packed nice and neatly whereas if we had gas particles they're moving all over in all these different directions that's more chaotic so if we go from a solid to a liquid we're increasing entropy and if we go from a liquid to a gas we're increasing entropy all right so when else does entropy increase well dissolution usually so when we dissolve something it usually makes it more random so if I had some NaCl solid, which is represented by here, uh, nice and organized, regular structure, not very chaotic, and then water comes in and attacks it and starts pulling it apart and separating the ions and you know moving them around, they're able to move around more instead of those ions being stuck into place, we've increased the entropy of our system. It's now more chaotic. All right, so when we're looking at reactions, you want to look at the phases and the numbers of them. So, for example, here I have iron rusting. Right? I have iron solid reacting with oxygen, giving me iron oxide. But I'm also going to want to look at the phases. I start with a solid, four solids, and I start with three gases, and I end up with two solids. So not only am I decreasing the number of things, I'm also decreasing the number of of gases. Remember gases are pretty chaotic so I just turn gases into part of a solid. So that's going to be a decrease in entropy. These things are becoming less random. All right, So here's another example. I have H2O liquid and I got two of them becoming two H2 gases and one O2 gas. So I'm going from a liquid and I'm making three gases. So this is going to be an example where entropy goes up because I'm starting with a liquid and I'm ending up with only gases. Gases are more chaotic. They can move around more than liquids can. So this is an increase in entropy. 
All right, so some more about entropy. We use S as its symbol. So entropy, we abbreviate with S. So it's a state function, which is kind of helps with remembering that, right? S, entropy, state function, they both start with S. So basically all that means is it doesn't matter how you got there, entropy only depends on the state that's it that it's in, all right? So how it is right now doesn't matter how it got there, it's describing how it is. Is it this situation or is it this situation? It doesn't matter how it got to be that, it just matters how it is, what state it's in. All right, some bookkeeping. Now keeping track of numbers and stuff. So the change in entropy is equivalent to the final entropy minus the initial entropy. Probably not blowing your minds yet, okay? Uh, S is a measure of disorder. So you think of it this way. A positive change in S means that you've increased the disorder. You've made it more chaotic, which is favored. That is favored by nature. If you had a negative delta S, that tells you you become less disordered, more ordered, which is unfavored. Okay? So let's think about delta S and heat transfer. Q is the symbol we use to describe heat transfer. You probably remember it from like Q equals MC delta T. Right, so Q is the heat transfer. This is not a state function. This does depend on what path you take, how you, you know, changing these bonds and releasing energy. That will influence what Q is. But Q for reversible reactions can only have one value. Because remember, if the Q reverse was different than the Q forward, it wouldn't be a reversible reaction. Reversible reactions mean if I go forward this much, I can get back to exactly how I was. If I go on back, that much. So the Q reverse and Q forward have to be equivalent to each other, right, for reversible reactions. So under these conditions, we can relate heat transfer to entropy. When do we have reversible reactions? Phase changes. That's right, phase changes. Okay, so we're going to look at phase change equilibrium. So we get this equation. This is the equation we're going to want to use. Delta S equals Q rev divided by T. All right, so that is our equation. What's it all mean? Well, notice it's T and not delta T because temperature must be constant, which is true for phase change equilibria, right? If you got a solid and you heat it up till it starts melting, once it's at that melting point, it stays at that temperature until all of it's melted. So temperature is going to be constant for these things. It must also be in Kelvin. We got to use the absolute scale of temperature. So make sure you're using Kelvin, not Celsius, definitely not Fahrenheit. And Q rev is the heat transfer for a reversible process. That's the rev part. Okay, so here's the problem. Calculate the entropy change for one mole of liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius going into the gas phase. So notice that we are at the phase change temperature. We are at the boiling point. So we're at equilibrium. We have a constant temperature, and it's just going from liquid to the gas phase. All right, so we're going to use that equation. Delta S equals Q rev divided by T. And Q rev, well, we got to figure that out. We're going to look up the uh, specific heat of liquid water. I look it up. It's 40.67 kilojoules per mole of water. And it's saying for one mole, so I'm going to do one times positive 4.67 kilojoules. And then I'm going to times it by 1,000 joules over kilojoule because entropy is typically given in joules per mole Kelvin. So we want to end up with joules. All right. So I do that and I get 4670, so 40,670 joules. So now I'm going to plug that into my equation. I go, all right, well, 40,670 joules divided by 373 Kelvin. Because remember, if I got 100 degrees Celsius and I need Kelvin, I need to add 273 to it. And that's where I get the 373 Kelvin from. So now I just kind of plug and chug. And I get 109 joules per Kelvin. So a positive value indicates that there's an increase in entropy going from a liquid to the gas phase, which I hope you could guess because liquids are more organized than gases. Gases are the most chaotic phase that we're talking about right now. All right. So entropy and spontaneity. The universe favors changes that increase the entropy of the universe. All right. So this is the second law of thermodynamics. In order to figure out if the entropy of the universe increases, we have to look at the entropy of the system and the entropy of the surroundings. Right, so most of the time we're just looking at the system, but to figure out, you know, the universe is it becoming more chaotic, we got to look at the surroundings as well. So we get this equation: the change in the entropy of the universe has to equal the change in the entropy of the system plus the change in the entropy of the surroundings. So for reversible reactions, 
it has to equal zero because they're reversible. So you can undo those things by going <clears throat> in reverse of what you did. Reversible reactions don't change the entropy of the universe, but irreversible reactions do. So irreversible reactions or spontaneous reactions will give you a greater than zero, so a positive change in entropy. So the entropy of the universe is increasing for every spontaneous irreversible reaction. So you have a spontaneous reaction, it's increasing the entropy of the universe. Wait a minute. You said earlier, looking at the rusting thing, that we had a spontaneous reaction and the entropy went down because we had three moles of gas and four solids and we ended up with just two solids. We got less stuff and we got rid of gases. They became part of a solid and the entropy went down. Doesn't that go against what you just said? Huh, Mr. Onion? No. It doesn't. But why not? Because the reaction is just our system. We're just looking at just the system. If we're talking about the entropy of the universe, we also have to look at the surroundings. So the decrease in entropy of the system causes an increase in entropy of its surroundings. How did it do that? Well, this reaction is exothermic. It releases heat. So that heat is going to the surroundings, and the surroundings can now move around more, which is going to make it more chaotic. So releasing the heat made the surroundings uh, have a higher entropy, and overall, we had a positive change in entropy for the universe. So that increase in entropy of the surroundings was more than the decrease in entropy of the reaction. So yeah, it, yeah, I, I can contradict myself. Anyway, most of the time though, uh, we'll just be concerned with the delta S of the system and it gets kind of annoying to write delta S subscript system every time. So we'll just write delta S. If we're talking about something other than the system, we'll specify. So delta S is really delta S of the system. We don't have to keep writing system. So to summarize, entropy is a measure of disorder. The entropy of the universe is increased by spontaneous reactions. And remember, spontaneous reactions are irreversible ones. And reversible reactions do not change the entropy of the universe. So uh, the only equation that you're going to have to remember is this one. And it's for like phase change equilibrium for reversible reactions. Okay, so that's it. Hope, I found, hope you found it helpful. And I'll see you in class. Bring questions. Goodbye.